What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself, the best one, Donnie, here with... What is going on? We are Wrestling Maniacs. Ben here, Uncle Ben, America's favorite uncle and wrestling's punching bag, Raid Circus, if you will. And today we are joined by none the other. Uh, Ricky Williams. Uh, Ricky knows best. Um... 93 till infinity aka the host with the most shout out to me and shout out to y'all shout out to everybody in america by the way too appreciate every single one of y'all god bless y'all what's up so we do want to let you guys know that this saturday on the we are wrestling youtube channel will be live our biggest watch along of the summer summer slam it's going down this week we're posting content every single day here on the channel but before we get into our predictions for summer slam if you're not a we are wrestling maniac you are ready and you're not a part of the thousands of subscribers we recommend you to hit that subscribe button now turn on the post notifications videos be coming out of nowhere like an rko and of course, you already know, the grind is real. So, what do you want to talk about? So, here's <laughs> what I do want to talk about. Let's talk about our thoughts on the buildup for this year's SummerSlam. Because we do want to put a disclaimer to the maniacs that are listening or watching the predictions. We don't like to just give you guys our straight answer who we think is going to win. We like to talk about the storylines. We like the fantasy book. And we really like to talk about the buildup leading to the matches. So we'll start off with you, Ben. What's your um, thoughts on this year's SummerSlam buildup? So we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, we have a saying here in We Are Wrestling called We Got the Script. Um, so far, like, I have to say, SummerSlam is looking pretty spotless. You know, I mean, I, it's basically been built this kind of building it ourselves. Like a lot of the things that we thought are coming true a little bit later than we thought. Like we thought a couple things were going to happen at Mania, but we are getting some of those matches here at SummerSlam. So um, in terms of the buildup, there's been some really, really great ones. And there's been some OK that has just stuck the landing. Um, I got a couple of my favorites just like these guys, I'm sure do. Um, but so far, I think the buildup, if I'm going to go one to 10, I'm going to give it like, like a solid, I'm going to give it a solid eight most, but 7.5 out of 10. It hasn't been, it hasn't been fucking excellent, but it hasn't been terrible. And I would actually rather say good. Alrighty. So Ricky, what's your thoughts on the SummerSlam buildup so far for this year? <coughs> yeah. Uh, solid card so far. Um, every match is looking it's looking solid. Every match is looking solid. The stories have been they've been heating up a little too late to me, in my opinion. Most of them. Mm -hmm. And then um, like I said, the matches are good. Just the only thing is there's no tag matches, which is weird. Probably my first time in years. I've never seen any tag matches on a pay-per-view. Or see, PLE that's that's my biggest problem with this, is there's really not any tag matches. Like if you really think about it. The last time the Raw Tag Team Championships or the SmackDown Tag Titles have been defended were WrestleMania. You know what's the funny thing? You know the funny thing about that is I thought at least the World Tag Team Titles were going to be defended here. I thought so too. I, at least I thought the, that. I thought to be honest with town? you, we, we were going to get the um. Yeah, I thought we were going to get the World Tag Titles on. Yeah, that's what um, I'm Smackdown. saying. And then they've been they've been hyping it up a little bit that they were with going the, to do I it. I thought we were going to get DIY now. versus um. What's his? What's their names? Um, Tamatanga and Jacob Fatu. Exactly. I thought that they would want to do that on a bigger stage, exactly. like SummerSlam. Or at least, or at least as an appetizer, Jey Uso versus Dominic Mysterio. At least. Yeah, it's kind of weird. At, at but, least, um, at, at least, because they, yeah, y'all know the story. At, at least. Yeah, but um, I will give my thoughts on this year's SummerSlam buildup. Besides not having tag matches and. Some of the guys I really wanted to see, like Wyatt Six, I think that the card is looking really freaking good. I think that the lineup is looking like a great SummerSlam card and honestly a lot of long-term booking. So that's what makes this pretty exciting in my opinion. I got a question for y'all. Um, what up? 
I mean, I know I ask this a lot, but I'm gonna keep asking y'all this until I'm probably 80. Match of the night. Show me the card Ooh. real quick. Match uh, of the night. So before we will be dissecting each match one by one, but the card is looking like this. We have Logan we Paul versus LA Knight for the United States Championship. Ooh. We have the World Heavyweight Championship, Damian Priest versus Ooh. Gunter. Intercontinental Championship, Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker. Ooh. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins, a special guest referee. Women's Ooh. World Championship match, Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. And the main Ooh. event, Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokola for the WWE Undisputed Championship. Oh. Oh. WWE Championship. I can't Stacked call it that. Card. Oh. I'm just calling it like I oh. see it, man. I prefer it as a WWE Champion, oh. but they consider it undisputed. I don't freaking know. So I got a question Why? about that. Look, so I got a question. So are both the belts still put together? Like, No. No, I'm no, confused. it's its own thing now. Uh, it's separate now with the World it's Heavyweight separate. title. Yep. Oh, because I, so I looked online, like, they still have the um, World Heavyweight. They still have the lineage, though, so that's why I'm asking. So it's I looked uh, online WWE, at the website. It still has the yeah. lineage, though. So still for active, so. for the Roman's title that Cody has right now, it's now known as the WWE Undisputed title, and then the World Heavyweight is basically what the Universal used to be. So now it's like the big gold again. So that's basically where we're going. We're basically going back to like SmackDown and Raw 05, 07 era. Like we have those those on the specific brands now. So my match of the night, I'm just going to say it right here. Yeah. It's, it's got to be Punk and McIntyre with Rollins, a special guest referee. This has been an eight-month feud, Build. and it's going to be a great match. Plus, it's so unpredictable because we really don't know where Seth Rollins is going to lie in this because like he's, had, he's had history with both McIntyre and Punk, and that's what I like about this match. Very unpredictable, and the, for the first time, we're getting Punk and McIntyre, so I am very yeah. excited to see that. Like I said last week, 97 situation again. Low key. Doug, I hate that that you asked this question because literally every single one of those matches are going to be heavy hitting in some way. Every single match that was just shown on the card has some kind of emotional tie to it. And every single person that is in those matches are heavy hitters. So I, if I'm going to be honest with you, so match of the night, I'm going to agree with Donnie. It's going to be, that's going to be the heaviest hitting match. Moment of the night is what's going to transpire after the fucking main event. And we all know it. That. <laughs> we all know it. 1,000%. Again, Cody in LA. I mean, uh, fucking Logan in LA. That's going to be a fucking heavy hitter. Rhea and Liv, heavy hitter with a little interference from Dom Dom. And we're going to see where he finally aligns. Like, we have some fucking serious build moments. Fucking the heart and fucking soul of Sami Zayn versus the brute force of fucking Braun Breaker. Dude. Breaker better win. This is going to bend the Told fucking you. universe of He's wrestling for the summer. Slam. This is going to be the pay-per-view of the summer you don't want to miss, bro. Or PLA Okay, but here's one thing I miss. am going to say before we do, like, get into all these matches. Yeah. Because a lot of the times we get a little too excited and we, like, get our hopes up when we're overbooking these things. And I really hope, like, the Dom thing happens. I really hope that the Roman things happens. Roman things happen. Like, man, man, it needs to happen. Needs to. Roman's, so I really Roman hope the WWE does not disappoint at this point because what Triple H is doing with these PLEs is incredible. The buildups are fantastic. He just needs to deliver on the things that all of us in the IWC are talking about. Roman is a thousand percent coming back. He's on, got on Saturday. He's a thousand percent coming back. It better not Saturday. be on SmackDown. I'll be pissed. No, he's not going to. It's gonna. It's gonna be at the end of that match, and I think he's gonna also help Cody secure the victory. I think yep, that that's too. gonna happen. I think he's I gonna think fucking so. lock in because him and Solo about a fucking B. Yep. Bro. Ro and then Roman's the gonna pop. make it clear. He's going to want his championship back at some point, but right but now he's got to handle first. bloodline business. There's some Me and Ben are on the same fucking on. page right now. Yeah. Let's go. Let's For go. Once. Ricky, <laughs> what's your match of the night? Uh, uh, maybe. got to say. Since I'm a fan of the other perspective, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say Priest and Gunther. Dude, that was my second choice. That was, that was my, my second, second choice. choice as well. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say Priest and Gunther. I like Priest I like where the story's going. So I actually don't like the story. I, I don't like it, but I do like the intensity. The combat, good. But I don't bro. like the story because it gives me flashbacks for a lot I'm of other right obvious now. reasons. It's just different angles. Saturday, this one right here. 
They should keep it like that. They should not go to any more disrespectful extreme measures. If y'all know what I'm talking about, dude, Saturday is a hundred percent gonna submit fucking Damien's legacy. Yes, his fucking pops, bro, and the crowd behind him right now is fucking wild. And it's crazy because he's he's the fucking champion and he's the underdog. The last time we saw this was Rey Mysterio, underdog, but he's the champion, and it's gonna fucking absolutely build him some credibility with his this win against Gunther. It will definitely add some credibility, but we'll get into that in God just a moment. Sorry. I know, man. It's too exciting. It. So this is why all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs that are listening to the SummerSlam 2024 predictions need to tune in Saturday live watch along. Biggest party of the summer. It's going to be a lit time. So now with that being said, let's get into the matches. Starting things off, we have... For the United States Championship, Logan Paul versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Starting things off with Ricky, what's your thoughts on this match? L.A. Knight should win, clearly. No debating. None. Yeah. He should win this match a thousand percent. If he does not win this match, I got questions. And then that's the case from here on out when it comes to Logan Paul. But like I said, I have a saying on this channel now. I am not stopping the microwave every time he comes out. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. We ain't stopping that microwave, son. I am not stopping the microwave if he comes out with that title. I am not stopping it. Do not tell me otherwise. I am not stopping that microwave for that boy. Only I don't, two care, what he has to say. I don't care about his promos. All I care about him is getting in that ring. I am not stopping the microwave. So do not tell me otherwise. If y'all tell me Logan Paul's on that television, I'm changing the channel to my Xbox right off the rip. It looks <laughs> like the popcorn's going to be overcooked, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not Heart stopping the microwave. Crisp. I see him with that title Heart after SummerSlam. We're going to need extra butter I'm on that popcorn, it. then, this Saturday. Well, LA Knight wins. Hold on. Let me get back to it, though, because I'm getting off topic a little bit. LA Knight wins, and then he's finally a champion. He's actually earned this. Yep. His rise might have yeah. been. His rise might have been. Slow. What do y'all call it? Um, Unorthodox somewhat? Yeah. Is that unorthodox that, is stuff? good. It's probably been unorthodox, but it's been good in the long run. So mm -hmm. we'll see yeah, where it goes from here. I'm actually excited. And then they finally won the championship. I'm actually happy for the man, too, on top of all of that. It is, it is long overdue for LA Knight to win the championship. But I don't know. I have a gut feeling Logan's retaining it. Like, they're Shut not going to have a fucking mouth, Donnie. Cleveland. Shut your yeah, fucking mouth, Donnie. Yeah, I'm not stopping the, the best place man. for him to lose. That's the Listen, best he wins, that's a, Let me tell you all this right now. If he wins at SummerSlam, I'm going to take a drive. A he will I'm taking a drive. His, um, if he belt. wins at SummerSlam, I'm taking a drive to McDonald's Same. real quick. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. All right. So I'm saying this right now. Ellie and I's taking this. He's taking it. It's been it's been foretold in the prophecy for a long time. LA Knight is becoming a single handedly this generation's build of John Cena. And you know what I'm talking about. We're going for the US title first, baby. And after that, we go into the world heavyweight. You already know. It's already written in the stars. LA Knight has beyond deserved this opportunity ever since he stepped into the fucking main roster and took his goddamn name back, dude. This guy has been absolutely entertaining to watch day in, day out, week after fucking week. Every time he's on the fucking screen, the crowd pops. Everybody's compelled to watch. Dude doesn't slow it down on the gas pedal. And who better than the megastar to take out the old fucking megastar of YouTube? It's going to be an absolutely money-making match. LA Knight coming out 100% U.S. champion, and we are going to be getting a very credible U.S. title again. And I'm fucking stoked because who else better than LA Knight? Yeah. All Just right. Think about so that now, age, too. How old is he? Before, is he up there before, every, before like everybody comes at me for what I said now about Logan Paul, I do want to make my case. Okay. <laughs> so, with Logan versus LA Knight, LA Knight, I agree with everything you just said, Ben. I think you made some very valid points. He would actually bring prestige back to the United States Championship. I think I even made the reference on like an old episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast about the John Cena thing, getting the US title first, then eventually getting the WWE Championship. But here's what I think is going to happen realistically. I think they're not going to give the title to LA Knight because Fuck realistically, you. LA Knight is so talented that he doesn't need a championship. And I think they're going to try to give it to somebody that could use the championship more. And I think okay. Logan's title run's not over yet. He ain't going to lose in Cleveland. And I hate to be the one that's um, 
causing this storm. Yeah. <laughs> Disagreeing with you, tagging myself back in. Um, honestly, that's where I respectfully disagree. And I say that respectfully. I think, if anything, him losing... It could go either in, way. Him losing in Cleveland, fucking at Logan losing in Cleveland, would honestly be fucking great and ironic, considering he himself has talked shit about Cleveland in his run thus far. Oh, he, he left did. Cleveland. Yes, he did. He, he left Cleveland he to go pursue shit, and now he's coming back with Yeah, didn't the belt. he, like, make, like, a little LeBron joke or something? He did. He did. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. This would be perfect for him to lose in fucking Cleveland. And for LA Knight to win in Cleveland, dude? Fuck yeah. See, if this was in Puerto Rico, I can understand that. I would see Logan winning because he's hot out there. That's where he is now. That's technically built from Puerto Rico now. But we're not in Puerto Rico, bro. We are in goddamn Cleveland. I think I want to make one one more point too. Yeah, what's up? Here's another reason why I could see Logan Paul retaining the championship. Angelo made a great point on one of our old comment of the weeks. We got to think about it long term storytelling here, and WWE never pulls a TNA where they have a pay per view, they give the championships to all new people. And on this card, I do have some new champions that are going to be happening. So I feel like if they're going to change the Intercontinental title, they're not going to change the U.S. They're only going to do one or the other. See, here's the thing. I think they're going to change Intercontinental and U.S. because neither of those fucking main titles are being changed. I think that they're going to retain. I don't think it's going to be another... I don't think they're either gonna I don't think they're gonna change because I don't think they're gonna have another pay per view where no titles change hands again. We saw how that was received. Yeah, like I it's I could see it going both ways. Like I'm not saying like Logan Paul is a hundred percent gonna retain the championship because I could definitely see LA Knight winning it. And honestly, for me as a fan, I want LA Knight to win, but when it comes to the predictions, I'm gonna be unpopular and I'm gonna say Logan Paul. Yeah, like I'm going to I'm going to say LA Knight, but I'm going to say also the two titles and we'll get to it in a little bit. The two titles that I do think are going to change are the US and the World Heavyweight if there if there are ch title changes because I feel like those are the most flexible right now. Well, I see two. I see two cuz then again, you know, Sami Zayn's it's been it's been a very very lackluster, but we're going to get there. But I'm going to go with So, LA who Knight. do we got final answers? Who's winning? LA Knight. LA Knight, like I said, I'm not stopping that goddamn microwave if I see Logan Paul in that championship. And I'm going to go Logan Paul. Moving on now to our next match here on the card. It is for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Damian Priest Beautiful. versus Gunter. Can we just talk about how good that fucking picture of Gunther was on that card? That shit was like an actual like boss level fucking graphic, dude. Even Damian Ring looks great. general like, looks shit great, right there. Then Good ring general ring shit. Ring at at all. He's Good literally time. like the final boss in professional wrestling. Gunther literally is like I put him in the same <gasps> standard as um I put him in the same standard as um Okada. When it I comes know, Ben, I want to see Gunther chop the final boss too. Uh, but when it comes to um when it comes to the in ring stuff, Gunther really is one of those he's really top five right now. I can't really argue that. And he's a workhorse. I don't know. We're turning into talking. Daredevil right now. You turning into we're Daredevil right now? A little bit. Um, oh. We're we're Roll talking about the back final of your boss. Head then, son. <laughs> so we have. Um, we were just talking about final bosses and stuff. I'm gonna make this random hot take since we're talking about this match, anyways. Say Gunther wins, and say we got the next opponent opponent showing up slash making his return that night. What if he wins the title? has his little in-ring celebration, and we hear Brock Lesnar's music play. That was one of my predictions. I yep. was going to say that because I could see Brock Lesnar showing up. We haven't seen him in a minute, and I just did a whole tier list video on Brock Lesnar, which is a great segue. If you guys want to go check out my tier list video, I ranked every Brock Lesnar match from SummerSlam, and yes. Lesnar is known for um, being Mr. SummerSlam. So he that never won the IC title, happen. right? Huh? And he never won the IC title, right? He's never won the Intercontinental title or US. What a feud. What a feud. Build that shit for either the Rumble or build that shit for fucking Survivor Series. Give me it. Give me it. Wait, no. Like, Gunter's not Intercontinental. That's World Heavyweight. Lesnar's never won the heavyweight title. Oh, well, World well, what Heavyweight are you title. talking about, my man? Not, not Intercontinental. Sorry, I was, I was still stuck on the whole Brown Breaker thing. What are you talking sorry. about, my man? 
My brain has been soup, dog. I've been in front of this fucking computer for like six hours already today. <laughs> the grind is real. <laughs> but no, like, again, World Heavyweight. I could see that happening, man, because that's, that's again, a, a main event level card. I mean, title. And it's one he's never won. And it's Gunther. They've been teasing this since the Rumble 2020 or 2021. That is true. So, but They've Ricky, what's it. your thoughts on this matchup? Like, have you enjoyed the build? Like, what are you looking forward to with this match? Or not looking forward to? Like I said, it's been an underrated build up. Um, I like the match. It's matching tonight, just like I just mentioned several minutes ago. Uh, Gunther gives me final by boss, boss vibes. Damian Priest gives me level one vibes. So he Damn. literally is the underdog, even though he's the world champ. But then all in all, that. I got Gunther. I got Gunther winning. The story's been solid. It gives me some flashbacks. Like I said, I hate it somewhat too. It gives me flashbacks, but then at the same time, I actually like it. And um, I got his match of the night. You can't be disappointed by that. So Ben, before you like give your final thoughts on this, I do want to share my opinion on do this it. match because, in case you guys all know. When Damian Priest won at Money in the Bank, if you were part of the live watch along, you know how pissed off I was knowing that SummerSlam, we're not getting Rollins versus Gunter. Instead, we're stuck with Damian versus Gunter. And I can't believe I'm saying this in the predictions. This has been one of my favorite storylines going into this card. And I've really enjoyed the chemistry between the two. I yeah. think Damian Priest is just really coming off as such a great natural baby face. And Gunter is just becoming a more and more heel. And the fans are giving him those reactions too, which I really like. And man, Damian Priest as world champion has grown so much on me. And I think that, oh man, I think Damian, I gotta go Damian. I'm behind him right now, dude. I have not been behind yeah. Damien going all the way back to his NXT run. Oh, okay. Like well, I have been waiting for this priest and we finally got it. And especially with the way that they've been building the storyline up, bringing up some of Damien priest's hardship. I think priest is going to get that big win. And I think it's really going to solidify him as a top baby face world champion. Oh, because man, I think bro. the person that's going to take the title off of Damien, and this is like months from now, it's going to be Finn Balor. Okay, that's that's hey, that's solid. I'm not gonna take that from you. That's a solid ass fucking booking. They're slowly building it up, man, every single week. And I love how slow they're doing it. And it's been like over now, like a year and a half that they've been doing this. So yeah. I think like when it gets time to WrestleMania, I could see Finn Balor finally getting that championship back slowly but surely. But Priest, man. And I can't believe I'm going, I'm picking Priest over my boy Gunter, but damn. Man, Priest right, has I'm gonna, really earned it. I'm just gonna end it, and I'm gonna say Gunther. Uh, I like I respect the booking, and that's a hundred thousand percent the avenue they could take, and I would believe it. But I just I want my Brock Lesnar shit to be true. <laughs> I want my Brock Lesnar <laughs> shit to be true. We have two paths, Ben. One of them both is late. Brock Lesnar, or the other is let's wait, keep wait, pushing wait, Damian wait. as a main event guy. Wait, wait, who said Brock Lesnar? Oh yeah, I ain't stopping the microwave. Then forget that. Uh, <laughs> all right, so final answers. Gunther. Uh, Gunther. Gunther, the um, new champ. I'm, I'm the opposite today. I'm going Damian Priest. Moving on now to our next match here on the SummerSlam 2024 card. It is for the Intercontinental Championship, Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker. It sucks because this is the match I actually care the least about. Because, again, Braun Breaker... He's on some shit right now. Like, that dude is fucking, again, high on my radar. And I said this last night on the live watch along. For whatever reason, other than, like, his hot moments, like, I dig his heart, I dig his passion, I dig his skill set, I just never really been able to, like, fully rally myself behind Sami Zayn with literally anything. Like, I think he's one of the greatest to ever do it. I just, he's never been my favorite. He's never been, like... You know, oh, I gotta fucking see Sami Zayn go on this war path. Like, no, I've like other than like the bloodline story and maybe like his like supporting ass where he puts people over, but I just I don't see him as that guy, you know? Like I just don't see him as that guy. But again, I'm not denying the talent or the or the you know, 
or anything else. It's just not for me, you know? I respect that. How about you, Ricky? What's your thoughts on this? The new champ, Braun Breaker. I told y'all, money in the bank. This this is Braun Breaker's moment right here. He's going to get that championship. It's, and it it's past overdue be. a little bit, but at the same time, be. shout out to Sami Zayn because shout out to Sami Zayn because he's a workhorse. Mm-hmm. And then um, yeah. he's one arguably of one of the workers. best on. Say it again. One of the hardest workers out there, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, he's one of the best. He, he's literally a workhorse. So a shout out to Sami Zayn. But this is Braun Breaker's time, and they've been building him up like an animal, like. If you're not going to put that championship on him, then I ain't stopping the microwave in that moment. I'm sorry, Sami Zayn, but I'm not stopping that microwave for you today. So have you enjoyed the feud with Braun Breaker and Sami Zayn leading up to this? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, Braun Breaker has been an animal. Like, they've been building him up to be, I wouldn't say like a Goldberg, Brock Lesnar thing, but just like dominating, like just literally destroying everything in his path. He's like a hyena at night or a gazelle in the woods. He's literally just killing everything in sight that he sees. He's just like this. You point at it, he's going right at it. Just uh. <laughs> the boy, just like this. You point at it or give him the green light, he he gonna kill it straight up like that. But like I said, Braun Breaker, new Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn, I love you so much, buddy. But it's time for you <laughs> to give the reins a little bit. No, no pun intended. All right, so now I do want to put myself in the middle here and say. I totally understand where you're coming from, Ben, with Sammy, because he really did like lost a lot of momentum after that bloodline thing. And obviously it was the further Roman Reigns' historical title run, because if they had the opportunity to make him a world champion, it would have been at that elimination chamber in Montreal. But they obviously had different plans going in, and it all worked out. But for Sammy, he has been a great defending Intercontinental Champion, But the thing I don't like is the storylines. Like, I know he feuded with Gable. It was a little bit entertaining, but I think they dragged it on way too long. And then Money in the Bank, I felt like they should have given us that surprise and had Braun Breaker win right then and there. But I get they want to kind of show some hardship with him. So that's why they're probably having this happen at SummerSlam. Yeah, you got to create. You got to create adversity, too. Man, like, I want more, just like Ben. I want more. And I think Sammy, the problem is, is that Sammy is so talented that we've already seen him in the Intercontinental title picture. I, th- for Me personally, I want to see him going for that World Heavyweight Championship. That's, that's where, where he should be. So, yeah, that's where I disagree. But okay. You also got to create adversity, too. Like, remember Cody lost to the Reigns last year, right? You have to create a little adversity for the character and give character development. Too. And I will say this was a missed opportunity on Triple H because – and I get a lot of criticism for this. I'm not the biggest fan of Dragon Off, but I'm sorry. This should have been a triple threat match. Dragon Off should have been on this card. <laughs> I'll now say you, it. Now you're saying that was unexpected. That was unexpected. Like, all these matches on the card are all one on ones. Like this could have been a perfect opportunity to have a triple threat match. Dragon Off is somebody that they're trying to build some equity with. Why not have him on the PLE card? And they could have done that breaker spot that they did on Raw a couple weeks ago when he friggin' broke his ribs. (laughs) But um, who do we got winning this? Final answers. Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker. I'm going Braun Breaker, baby. Let's go. Sammy, I love you, Sammy. I love you, Sammy, a lot. But if you win, I ain't stopping the microwave, brother. And just a quick reminder, too, that the maniacs that are still listening – We'll be live this Saturday for WWE SummerSlam. Watch along. So if you guys are looking for somebody to watch this PLE with, the biggest PLE of the summer, we'll be live, all of us in person. But moving on now to the next match here, which I totally forgot to even put the card up. So in editing, you'll see the card, but they won't. It is for the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bailey versus Nia Jax. Can't believe I almost forgot that match. (laughs) We'll start off with you, Ricky. Oh, you start with me? Um, I don't know because um, here's my thing. You got you got Tiffany Stratton hanging around. So my thing is, is she going to cash in and turn it into a triple threat match? Or I got Nia winning ultimately. 
But I feel like Tiffany's going to try to cash in, too, at the same time. And she might sneak in and win it. So either way, it's like, it's 50-50 with me on that one. The story hasn't been great. I'm, I'm biased. Uh, I, I'm, I'm biased for Nia. So the, the story's been beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm biased. The story's been beautiful. Um, it's been beautifully made at the same time. And Bailey hasn't done it for anybody. Has ba- has Bailey done it for y'all? Bailey respectfully, during re- respectfully, this dude, respectfully, has Bailey done it for anybody? Nope. Bailey has done nothing with this run. I'm sorry, it's so Bailey. disappointing because I am such a huge yep. fan of her work. I'm, I'm sorry, Bailey, but. I don't know. I got to blame Booking for this one because Triple H, you haven't been making Bailey a, a legitimate champion at all. Yeah, like, but with Bailey, like, even like, I saw a comment too. One of the maniacs said, and they said, Oh, you guys forgot that Bailey was champion for like 380 days. Her title runs have not ever been that good. She's always been good at chasing the title. She's never been good as uh, champion. I mean, nobody forget. Opinion, respectfully. We, we didn't forget. We haven't forgotten about it. It's just this. We're talking about this title reign right now, though. We ain't talking about that one. Well, this is far worse than her it, other run. This that is she probably had just. This is probably a little lackluster. Like ba- Bailey's not to blame. I blame creative a little bit, but this it takes been, two, man. Like if she it's just been lackluster. Like nobody. I'm sorry, I've seen her work at NXT, and she was, and even with her other title run for 380 days, she was able to make her title run somewhat entertaining. So part of it is her fault because yes, creative is probably not giving her the best stuff, but what do all the legends say in this business? You got to go out and just do the best you can with what you're given. Yep. And she hasn't done that in my opinion, mm-hmm. respectfully. Yep. But Ben, yep. what's your thoughts on um, this build up and match? Uh, ben Murdoch. So when it comes to this build up, I, again, it's one of those ones. I think they're just kind of like focusing on Tiffany Stratton and her cash in, which is inevitably coming. And they've already been teasing Tiffany versus Nia. So, I mean, I feel like it could go one of two ways. One, Bailey could win and Tiff could ultimately cash in and win. And that's going to cause tension and start the feud between Nia and Tiffany. If not immediately, there's going to be the cracks happening almost immediately week by week. Um, Or we can go the more fun route. We can have Nia win. And then Tiffany either cash in or attempt to cash in and then causing the friction in the riff. So it's one of the two, man. It's one Honestly, of the two. I kind of want Tiffany to play with fire a little bit. So I'm I do too. <laughs> I was like, more, we can either go the fun route. towards the second option. I like yeah, that. I say like we can go the fun <laughs> route, but either way, Bailey needs to drop this title because she is the most lackluster champion. And honestly, Homegirl needs to go work on her promos and her mic work because she's very, very lackluster unless she's either a heel or a hugger. And that's not really versatile at all. Yeah, like as a normal baby change. face, she hasn't really gotten like her promo work has like really gotten worse. It's not even just promo work, but like talking in media is just like so casual now. And it's like she has like no character to her. No you know? character. Like, there's no yep, character. The there's word. no personality. Yep. So, and that's, that really hurts a superstar, man, especially someone who's supposed to be fucking making a face for the revolution right now. And back in the day, something that I know is you're supposed to be larger than life. And yeah, that is not happening with Bailey right now. So now they're going to get the actual larger than life to step it up a little bit. Let's go. Let's go. But, um, I will get my thoughts quick on this. Her title run has just been very lackluster. They haven't really been putting her on the PLEs, which isn't helping her whatsoever. Tiffany Stratton is the one person in all of this that's really growing on me a lot more every single week. Same. So here's the two scenarios that um I would like to see. And I'm just going to start it off here with Bailey beats Nia Jax. But then Tiffany Stratton comes out and cashes in the money in the bank and wins. Option number two. Nia Jax beats Bailey, which I rather option two than option one. And then Tiffany Stratton goes out and win the money in the bank. So honestly, I'm going Tiffany Stratton here. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go. Oh, oh, like entirely. You think she's going to actually. <laughs> yep, cash I'm in? going Tiffany Stratton. She's cashing in that damn money in the, the bank. Trigger. And we're going to have some fun here. And I hope they go with option two with Nia because I want them. To, I want her to play with fire so that on SmackDown, Nia Jax comes in backstage, throwing the trash cans, yeah. throwing everything, looking for her. And Tiffany's like hiding throughout like the episode. Yeah, that would be pure entertainment. And then tries to cash in after a match again. 
That'd be fucking hilarious, bro. And honestly, nope, that, Tiffany's yeah. going to cash in successfully on Naya, and it's going to piss her off. I don't think and that they're going to do next her dirty like that. I, I just, I don't know, man. But I'm going to go with Naya. <laughs> no, but it's, no, but just like McIntyre, it's going to add more character to I Naya. Said that. I said Naya that. is real. She's at her best that. when she's pissed off, oh, just yeah. like Drew. Oh yeah, I said that. I said that like several episodes ago. I, yep. And then that. next week on Friday, when Tiffany's the champion, they're gonna play hide and seek. She's gonna be hiding at the hiding throughout while Nia Jax is just causing. Right. Um, I'm going chaos. Nia. I'm Tiffany going needs Nia. to know something. T- Tiffany, I'm Nia's manager, so I got the I got the drop on you, sweetie. Like I, I got the drops on you. You're not doing <laughs> that. Right, you're not doing so, that. You're not doing that with Nia. All right, so I'm going Tiffany. You're going Nia. Ricky, who are you going with? Going with Nia, man. I'm biased towards Nia. And I got mm-hmm. Nia Jax all the way. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big lover, so I'm, I'm going with mm-hmm. Nia. I'm a big boy lover. I'm, I like the big ones. <laughs> big, <laughs> big boy lover. It's the truth. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. I'm just saying it like, I'm, yo, yo, Ben. I'm just saying it like it is, baby. That's just it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Nia, Nia, it. Nia's my last chick. My life. My, my, oh, my life. yeah, and there's okay. gonna be nothing bigger than our SummerSlam watch along this Saturday. So if you guys are looking for somebody to watch the show with, we'll be live here on the channel, pal. But moving on to a heavy hitter match here: CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Seth Riggin Rollins is a special guest referee. As I said before, this is a SummerSlam '97 situation. This match is going to be good, though. Like, the story's been good. It's been, what, eight months, y'all said? Eight months and the story's been brewing? Story's been very f- fantastic, months, yeah. phenomenal. And then th- these guys haven't been wrestling each other this long, and they've been making this story work. Like, that's some legendary stuff right there. If you if you can't get in the ring and make that work, and being out of the ring for eight months, then that, that's, that's some different type of tier right there. Then on top of that, like I said, this is a SummerSlam 97 situation. Um... Seth Rollins is screwing somebody. He's screwing somebody. He I don't know, like somebody. I don't and know that's if you remember the hard that. part about this predictions, mm-hmm. man. Who is Seth Rollins gonna screw? I don't know if you remember. Um, Seth, Brett spitting I mean, on no. Sean. Same punk. Sean hits, tries to hit Brett with the chair. Instead, hits Taker with the chair. One, two, three, new champ. We might that might be a similar situation Ooh, right here. Yeah. Either way, uh, Rollins might turn heel. I he might turn heel to. at SummerSlam. I think he's going he to. Hits That's Brett. I, I mean, think he's going to um, hit. He hits Punk with the chair. Uh huh. Makes Punk an even more realistic face, baby mm-hmm. face going on from yep. here. Yeah. And, and then Rollins can go get right back to being heel mode. And we can hear that evil laugh that he. Because <laughs> ah. <laughs> that laugh. Do that one more time, Ricky. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> now your turn, Ben. <laughs> No, nah, do the CM Punk one. Or, no, yeah, no, Seth Rollins, sorry. I don't know how to actually do the Seth Rollins one. I only know how to do his dance. <laughs> yeah, I only know his fucking dance. <laughs> if we don't see that he if we don't see that laugh during his heel run, it's not realistic at all. But like bye bye, bitch. Final, uh, <laughs> it's not realistic at all. But um like who did the I got, laugh? Um, Let us know in the comment section below. I got Drew I got Drew winning because he needs this win right now though. I got Drew because he needs this win. Honestly. He needs to finish his story. He needs this win. Punk doesn't need the, Punk doesn't need the win right now. Punk Drew doesn't needs need the, the win, win right now because he's Seth hot. Needs to turn on CM Punk. Yep, that's what now, needs to happen. Um, Drew needs this win because he needs it more yep. than Punk. Punk doesn't he need does. this win. I know. I'm saying Drew needs to win. Dude by Seth, a hundred percent. Just yeah, smack no, him with I the agree. chair. Smack him with the chair. Or do something. Give us that Cleveland screw job. <laughs> the Cleveland screw we'll job. Call it the Cleveland rim, rim job instead You're because screw jobs kind of copyrighted at this point. <laughs> you got me going back to 97 Survivor Series now. <laughs> so honestly, I think that, yeah, Rollins is going to turn heel. He's going to turn on Punk. Yeah. Honestly, it's gonna be and I think McIntyre is going to finish his story. And then going into the next PLE, maybe McIntyre tries to go at Priest now that he beat Punk. I can already see it. Priest could beat him clean, and then that's when we go back to the drawing board with McIntyre. I can already see it. Coming up on Monday. Finally. Now you know how it feels to get screwed, CM Punk. I told you, you've been fucking with me way too much. How does it feel there, laddie? 
<laughs> it's gonna be fucking I love incredible. That. I, I love Monday. that interface. I need to buy it so bad. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> But man, this is going to be probably one of my favorite matches on this card because of how unpredictable it is. Because I can also see McIntyre getting screwed by Cia, by um Seth Rollins as well mm. at the same time. There's so I got so a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel hold like up. there's like a hundred like different scenarios that could happen with this match. Hold on, hold on, hold up. Now that you mentioned that, so if Seth Rollins screws Drew, is Drew like is he a twiner at that point or is he still a heel? Oh, he's a heel because he's been one of those like heels that's like a hero because he has like reasons behind what he's doing. He's like an anti. So I think he just stays the same. Okay, okay, I get it. I, he's kind of like it. Venom, where he's like anti-hero. It's just what. Oh, yeah, keep him. in mind, uh, keep in mind, this match is going to be good. But CM Punk, I just pray to God you stay healthy from here on out. Yes, I know health is yeah. first, but we got to see you. We, we got to see you a lot more. Health is wealth. So who do we got winning this match? Um, I got Drew because um Seth might turn he- Seth's gonna turn heel and screw um Punk. Like I said, like I keep saying, ninety seven situation, baby. All right, Ben, who do you got? Same exact fucking, literally exactly what Ricky said. I I see that shit happening. It's written in the stars all over it. Damn, this is a tough one because this is where I have to make a hundred percent answer way, on who I want because. He- Seth's going to screw somebody either way. Look, I'm going to tell you guys this. 75% of me is leaning more towards Drew McIntyre because of what we're talking about. But 25% of me feels like, are they going to pull the trigger this early with CM Punk and Seth Rollins? Because we have a long way to go to WrestleMania. I could see them trying to maybe build up that relationship a little bit and then something happens, like maybe at the Rumble. But I, I think I'm going to go Drew McIntyre. I'm going to go with you guys on this one. McIntyre needs to finish his story. <laughs> but, yes, sir. Moving on, but moving on now to our next match here on the card. This is for the WWE Women's World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Let's start off with Ricky. Ricky knows best. <clears throat> the best storyline in WWE right now, in my opinion. And I'm in tune to it. I'm in tune to it because it's literally they got history. Live Live Morgan Revenge Tour or Rhea Ripley wanting her revenge. All of that is basic, but it's, it's obvious. It's the obvious reasonings and stuff. But this just feels like two girls fighting over their high school crush, somewhat. That is dirty Dom. <laughs> and then I dirty feel like Dom, um. Dom. Like, he's obviously going to play a factor into this, but his him playing his factor is going to really ultimately decide and influence the match, too. Like He's going to officially pick somebody. Because like I said, if you want a real woman, you want somebody that will train you and motivate you, you got to go with Rhea Ripley. If you want that side Barbie, Harley Quinn, Joker, one of these side chick, you got to go with Harley Quinn. So what are we going to do? I'm going to take the motivating chick that's going to train me and turn me into a living legend, a larger-than-life type of person which is Rhea Ripley. Now, she might do some things that I can't see on camera to me all the time. That and then some. But would I rather have a motivator or would I just rather have a side chick that's high maintenance? I'd rather have a motivating chick that's motivating me to the next level, honestly. Somebody is going to help me build. I can't have no side Barbie. I mean, like this. Well, let's go to dinner. Okay. And, and, and then what? Then, then what? Like, what are we going to do after that? Which is the obvious. I'm not going to say it on camera. But then what are we going to do? I'm going to train with my, my motivator. I'm not about to be suicide diving out of windows, getting caught like Trey from Boys in the Hood with you. Like, I'm not doing it. I already said, man, if I'm in um, Dirty Dom Dom shoes, like he already fucked up with um, Rhea's trust, even though right now it's looking promising. He still messed with their trust. I would just go after Liv Morgan, but it is what it is at that point. But um, Rhea yeah, Ripley's this like is going Rhea, to be good. Uh, Rhea Ripley's like um, really I know you don't watch One Piece, uh, Ben. I don't know if you quit or not. I think you quit. This yeah, is literally like White anime. Beard going after Sue me. Sakazuki after he just killed A's. Rhea Ripley is White Beard. Liv Morgan is Sakazuki. She's going to die either way too, regardless. But Dom, th- this is ultimately Dom's decision. He's going to play the biggest factor in this match. I want Rhea to win badly. But I know Rib is gonna win. I mean, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. 
<laughs> hold up, hold up. I said Riv. I, I mixed both their names together. My bad. Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. That would have been a good tag name for them when they were teaming. <laughs> I got, I got Liv retaining. Dominic's gonna cost the Rhea. Yeah. I want Rhea to win so bad, but I can't have everything in life. All right, ahead, so ahead, Ben. Ben, what's your thoughts on on um, the build up and the matchup coming up? About that field? name, though. <laughs> you already know how I feel about the build up. I mean, I, I've I've expressed it for weeks how fucking in tune to the storyline I am. I mean, it's fucking literally just China and Eddie all over again. Um, let's uh oh, let's mold. point let's point another uh another per, uh perspective on something real quick though. Lawyer Why mind. are we automatically assuming it was Liv that trashed the Judgment Day room? That I was thinking assuming? about as well when I watched Raw. Why? Why? Hold why on, repeat that. Happen? I didn't why see could, it. Hold on. Repeat that. Why do we automatically assume that it was Liv who trashed the Judgment Day's hideout in their headquarters? I'm saying it was Dom. I'm telling you that right now. I'm saying it was Dom. I think that him and Liv have been in this cahoots thing this whole time, and to trash the Judgment Day hideout. Rhea's not going to expect it being dumb, just like she's not going to yep. expect this blindside that's going to happen on fucking Saturday. That's why hey, I'm saying, there, dude, There's a reason, Ben. Her, he has that nickname. Dirty, dirty Dom. Dom. He lies, he cheats, he fucking steals. Let's, let's, let's switch up perspectives for a little bit. Dom has been orchestrating this shit the whole time. The whole fucking time at this point. I'm telling you, the night that Rhea came back, he's been behind, behind her fucking back, bro. I'm and there's a reason right why Dirty Dom didn't cross Finn off because Finn and Liv, they have been like secretly doing really stuff. Really getting tight. So there's, J Dirty Dom is trying to make some wait, cracks. Wait, wait, the way, you say it, the way you say it is funny. The way you say that is funny, though. Ben, you're on to something. No, I'm not, invested not, in not shit, The way you said that is hilarious to me, though, because they've but, been doing yeah. something. You out here like fucking Dora. You got the fucking map in the backpack. <laughs> it's just like look deeper into shit you know i think it's i really think that dom's low-key been the one that's orchestrating this and he's live is just he's playing it puppeteer. off mighty good he's i think she's just playing mighty good yeah and Rhea's not going to be expected to be blindsided by her family because is anybody really on Rhea's side is anybody really on damien Rhea's side? that's the only person that i got a question for both person. of y'all what I, I got a side question real quick and y'all probably been asked this a hundred times about this already is Judgment Day done after Raw, after SummerSlam? No. Nope. Are they officially done? No. No. They're going to go on for Are they going to rebuild or are they done? Is, is people getting kicked soon. out or what? I think people are I leaving. think they like reamp the group and I think Dirty Dom will probably take the leadership role. I think Priest and Rhea will get out of the group because Priest is going to have Rhea's back and it's going to piss Finn, Carlito, and JD off. Carlito, first off. <laughs> Carlito has been such a good asset. I hated it at first, but I'm actually enjoying it. Yo, he done snuck in the Judgment Day. Like, I'm like that's not cool. <laughs> that's I don't know. Cool. I, I didn't like Carlito at first in the Judgment Day. Me I don't either. think it's a style for this type of group anyway. Like, his style is cool. And I think He's it was gonna make his own faction or something. It, but the at the same time, I guess it's worked somewhat. But I do want to share my thoughts on this because Ben, you made some really good points there, like elite points. So with this here with Liv and Rhea. I'm very excited about this because obviously what we've seen on Monday Night Raw, they have built this as like a WrestleMania match at SummerSlam. So they have already taken my money. And I think that Dirty Dom is going to be turning on Rhea. It's obvious. And he's going to join Liv. And Liv will join the Judgment Day and replace her because all the other members, they want Liv over Rhea. Because Liv helped Finn, Barbie. helped Finn and JD win the tag titles. And Carlito is just trying to get into the group, so he's just going to go with the majority. <laughs> Priest is like already discrediting the Judgment Day for everything because he's trying to be a good world champion. And Rhea and him are like the closest, so of course Damien's going to have her back, and it's going to make some entertaining TV. Uh, hold on, hold on. I got another question. Um, I got one more question for both of y'all. You kick Priest out, you need a a monster heel. Who, who's going to replace Priest? Like they need Should a monster. Be yeah, because they need another Puerto Rican star. Oh, okay. I don't know who they're gonna end up replacing with. Though. They need a monster in Judgment Day. They need a monster like heel in Judgment Day. They're gonna replace Priest. They need yeah, a monster. Bra heel. Braun Strowman would be not a bad. Option. I was actually about to say Braun Strowman. So yeah, you're cooking, Donnie. Mm -hmm. He could benefit Loki from it. Okay. And Damian did beat him clean. 
So that could be a reason for him to align with the Judgment Day eventually. But we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. But now, what's going to happen at SummerSlam? Who's winning? Liv or Liv. Rhea? Liv. I want Rhea to win, but Harley Quinn is retaining. Liv Morgan, I think she's going to win this match. The feud is far from over. Oh, I think God, the yeah. storyline ends at Bad Blood, Hell in the Cell. Ooh. But moving on now to our main event match for WWE SummerSlam. I think we all know what's going to happen here. Oh yeah, Cody Rhodes will be defending the WWE Championship against Solo Sokoa. Bro, you can see how fucking Solo definitely broke his nose at some point in his career because that shit is hella fucking crooked, bro. Damn, that shit got a dent in that motherfucker. Sorry, I just noticed that shit. It was just, look at oh, that, see? Shit. Look at you, know, see? You know, see? Now I see it. Now that you pointed Damn, it out, you, you saw that, right? Like, I, I, I just noticed it. I was like, whoa. Did he get knocked at some point in his career? Hey, he's the Damn. street champ. Leave him alone. <laughs> hey, fuck it. So the first um, thing I do want to ask you guys before we get into the buildup. Yeah, talk what's to me, your bro. thoughts so far on Solo Sokoa's run as the head of the table in this? So movie? let me start. Let me let me start. Good. Mm. I like it. I like everything about it. This reminds me of um. This reminds me of the 2013 Bullet Club when Finn Balor, Bad Luck Fale. Tama Tonga and Carl Anderson first form. They've been literally savages all around the locker room. Like they literally been beating everybody up, humiliating everybody, scaring everybody, putting fear in, in everybody's hearts. They're just literally doing stuff the old school way. I love this version of the bloodline. Now y'all might disagree with me somewhat. Y'all might disagree. I'm not going, I'm not going to take y'all for it, but this right here, these guys are savages under solo. These guys are straight savages. And I'm, and I'm enjoying every single second of it. The microwave is not being stopped. I am not stopping this microwave if I'm 100 years old neither. There'll be a lot of popcorn made. But this one right here, this is the one. This is the bloodline I like right here. All right, so Ben, your thoughts so far on the new solo? So obviously not well received even by myself at first. It's obviously getting better with more people that are getting added to it, obviously. Um, I will say that the best part of this new bloodline is Jacob Fatu for obvious reasons. Um, I like it. Like, like Ricky just said, you know, uh, they are literally just savages Going on everything. leashes and Papa bear is fucking solo Sokoa. Um, I like it. I think that it's, uh, it's b brilliant having him have a massive body, a massive bodyguard like fucking Jacob Fatu as like his dude. Um, it just makes sense. He is somebody that runs shit from behind the scenes and then has somebody else take care of it where he gets the final shot off. And honestly, it's kind of sick. Um, is it my favorite iteration of the bloodline? I kind of have to agree. Um, we had a lobby, obviously a more like a uh, uniformed uh, organized crime with uh, Roman reigns here. We just have a bunch of contract killers. So it, it's really, really cool. Kind of seeing more mercenary work. Um, so it's going to be really, really cool seeing this big clash between the OG bloodline and the ones versus the bloodline. So it's going to be really, really, really cool seeing, uh, seeing fucking Jimmy like and fucking Roman like return tomorrow. Cause Jimmy's coming with Roman. I'm telling you that right now, as of fucking Saturday, Jimmy will be coming back. And I swear to God, it's with Roman because Jimmy just got cleared. Now we just got to recruit, uh, you know, homeboy Oos over on raw to come help take care of bit family matters. Uh, come blood, uh, war games rather. So it's gonna and be sick. Sammy, maybe too. Sammy could get involved. Sammy might be the next guy. I like that prediction. Because went. and here's the thing, Donnie has a point with Sammy. Sammy has been coming to fucking Jay Uso's aid heavily lately. So I think Sammy, I think Roman is gonna be recruiting <clears throat> Sammy and Jay, and it's gonna be fucking sick. Blood, dude. War Games is gonna be nuts this fucking year. Wait for November, yes, baby. Wait is. for November. Yes, I like, it is. I like that. Con I like that contract killer stuff, though. Mm -hmm. I, was, I didn't even think of that at first. I, yeah. I like that contract. That organized crime. And then, and contract you said, killers. Um, then you said Roman literally is like organized crime. He does things to the book. I, I like I like that. Like, I didn't even think mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Hey, I might have give you some points on that real quick. So with my thoughts on Sokoa, man, I have really enjoyed this new bloodline run since the beginning. I've been really behind this. I think Solo is a future star, and right now he's proving it. The only critique that I have is the lack of in-ring matches that he's done. 
Because the one thing that the IWC continues to bring up is 0-35 and 35 after that match with John Cena. And I think Solo Sokola needs to pick up some more wins under his belt to really solidify him as that killer. Which I think Fatu and Tama Tonga have been incredible. I want to see more from Tonga Loa, though. But nah, he's Botch City. He's but Kamacho man, still. Tama Tonga <laughs> and <laughs> Kabacho. <laughs> <laughs> he's Kamacho still. Nah, nah, but no, with Tonga Loa Tama alone. Tonga hey, yo, and Jacob Patu, they Loa have alone, far man. exceeded nah. my expectations. I'm sorry. I'm not going to leave Tonga Loa alone because he already fucking decked sorry, his own Kabacho. brother. Sorry, Kabacho. He missed Come the low blow the first time, and then he punched his own brother in the fucking I'm forehead sorry, on the I'm, second I'm time. So, no, I'm not I'm fucking sorry. giving Camacho a break. Tonga Loa, I love you, man. He needs to go get that old school that. bicycle and um, start riding around catering with Hudako again. Maybe back to the performance center. <laughs> Ride his old school bicycle to the performance nah, center. Nah, fuck a bicycle. Yeah, Homeboy got his training wheels on, dude. Give him a tricycle. <laughs> fuck that shit. Nah, Give him a tricycle. <laughs> oh, man. Can't do it. But that's the thing, though. I will say this new bloodline, I'm really enjoying it because it's something different than Roman Reigns' bloodline. And I think Paul yes. Heyman really was like the actor of the year here because he really made this group like into killers. We just need Armando just Estrada. Being there. We do we need, need Armando, Armando Estrada. I agree with you on Armando that. Armando Alejandro Estrada. <laughs> So I do agree with you, Ben, though. I do think Jimmy Uso will show up. Paul Heyman will show up with Roman Reigns. And he's going to look like a million bucks again. He's going to be so clean, Paul Heyman. He's going to be fucking, I guarantee, the moment after all said and done, he's going to put those shits right back on his neck where it belongs. I forgot what it's called, but he's going to put those shits Ooh, right back on his neck. What if we get that other Tonga brother? He debuts, and then to kind of even the numbers out, they could pretty much potentially show us like the entire like old bloodline. So like not only does Roman and Jimmy come out, Jay comes Jay out, Sammy. Sammy comes out because it's SummerSlam. And it's then, not or, on Raw or SmackDown technically. And, or in, in fucking Owens too. The fucking numbers even out. War Games is going to be nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now who do we got winning this match and what do we think Cody is going to happen? Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns is returning along with Jimmy Uso. We might even get some help from fucking uh, Jay and Sammy along with Kevin Owens and goddamn Randy Orton, dude. The ring is going to implode. The roof is going to explode and we are going to be left speechless. This is going to be WWE at its finest. And we're not even in the Netflix area yet, bitch. It better be because I do not want to be disappointed like I was at Buddy in the Bank. Ricky, what's your um final thoughts on like the ending? Like, what do you think is going to happen at the end of this SummerSlam match? Cody. Straight up. Cody for James. Everything Ben just said, I'm piggybacking off of. All righty. So my final thoughts on this. Cody Rhodes, he is going to retain the championship. I think he's going to go through some hardship throughout this match. Oh, yeah. Bloodline's going to make it super difficult for him. And then we're going to get Roman, Jimmy, maybe Sammy, oh, me. Jay. And I think they're going to even the numbers out from that bloodline. And it's going to go all over the arena. And it's going to be a great match overall. Solo's going to look great in this. He's going to look think, incredible. And I think Cody is going to retain the championship. And Every single person that is watching is going to need to tune in to Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, especially SmackDown, both. to see what is going to happen. I hope that this pay-per-view doesn't disappoint here because it has everything to be probably one of the greatest SummerSlams of all time. So I hope that Triple H does not fumble the bag here because Deliver. he has a perfect card, a perfect opportunity the only thing I would have done on the SummerSlam is personally had that Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga versus DIY oh, yeah. on the card or Wyatt Six versus Gable and the Creeds. But besides that, I really am looking forward to SummerSlam here, and it's looking to be probably one of the best PLEs this year. I agree. Is there anything else, guys, before we close off the predictions that you want to get ready for a fun filled fucking summer party this Saturday? Fucking SummerSlam watch along the biggest party of the summer. Let's go. Early happy birthday to JT. Early happy birthday to JT. 
Yep, and JT will be celebrating his birthday a day after with us live for WWE SummerSlam, the biggest blockbuster party of the summer, our biggest stream. So, guys, yeah. highly recommend joining us for WWE SummerSlam, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. But let us know in the comment section below your predictions for SummerSlam. We really want to hear it down below. And you really do have a high chance of being the comment of the week because we will be doing a normal episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast this week since now we are doing episodes every Friday. If you guys enjoyed the predictions for SummerSlam, make sure to smash that like button now. And if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. It's SummerSlam week. We have lots of awesome content coming out of nowhere like an RKO. Links down in the description below. You can go follow Ben, Ricky, and myself over on our social media pages or other YouTube channels. And you can even go check out Ben on Twitch, which I won't be surprised if he's on his phone this Saturday doing a Twitch stream while we're doing the watch along. We're just going to have to wait. And see yeah, he's a lawyer. I've been posting toy videos over on the Best One Donnie channel every single day. Gained over 100 subscribers within the last two weeks. So the grind has been certainly real. And Ricky has absolutely been killing it here on We Are Wrestling. So go support us. All the links below. But to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, hope to see you guys on Friday for the podcast. Hope to see you guys Saturday for the WWE SummerSlam watch along because of course you already know we are taking over peace